Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> That's probably the most famous line from the Apollo 13 mission. We have a problem. That's what many people would like to say today. today. With all the scandals in the church, with the low attendance in our parishes, with young people drifting away from their faith, many would like to say, Bishop da Cunha, we have a problem. Pope Francis, we have a problem. With all due, with all due respect, sir, I believe this will be our finest hour. I hope you are with me tonight in embracing the challenges, the difficulties that we all face, but we face it together. I hope that you are here today because you believe that. Because we believe that we can change these problems into real opportunities. We have here tonight over 400 people signed up, and it's probably around that many here tonight, representing over 70 parishes in our diocese, from the Aeroboros to the Cape and the islands and everywhere in between. You are here tonight because you believe that you, that us, that together we can make a difference. And we can transform these problems into solutions opportunities, and we can rebuild in faith and hope. You have been invited here tonight. Have you ever been a part of anything like this in your life? For many people, this is probably a first, that we've gathered over 400 people from throughout the diocese to come here tonight and say, let us all put together our faith, our prayers, our gifts, our talents, our energy to transform this reality that many are saying we have a problem. And we are here, here to say we have a solution. We have an opportunity. We have this great moment of change and transformation. Yes. Yes, it can become our finest hours. It depends on us and how we embrace this together. Jesus promised us that we are not alone. He promised us that he will be with us. It will take every one of us here together to really transform this reality of the discouragement, of the hopelessness, of the doom, and say, we can change it. The most, one of the most dangerous phrases that we use often is, we've always done this way. <laughs> Haven't you heard that? Oh, I heard many times when I came to Fall River, but we always done this way. Well, they say, if ain't broke, don't fix it, right? But they also say, you have to change if the team is not winning. Or they ought to say, if you do the same thing again and again and expect a different result, that's insanity, right? So. Yes, we need to embrace a new way of being church. 
we need to embrace a new way of involving our people. You are here tonight because you are saying, this is my church. I remember when I was a young priest, I had just become pastor of a church in New Jersey, and I invited a group of people to come and speak to our parish assembly from a very popular, well-known parish in St. Mary's in Coatsneck, New Jersey. The pastor was Father Bill Bausch, who had written many, many books and very famous, and one of the elderly ladies who was in the, that group, and she said, one day, I was giving a talk in another parish, and somebody asked me, where are you from? And I said, I am from St. Mary in Coatsneck. And they said, oh, you are from Father Bill's parish. She said, no, he is from my parish. <laughs> And I think that is what you are saying here tonight. Yes, we are always done that way. But now we're going, to, we're going to change. We're going to change it together because the times call for it. We no longer live in the time and in the church like when we all grew up, right? That Everybody went to church every Sunday. Everybody went to religious education. Everybody received the sacraments. Those days are not here anymore. And unless we embrace this new way of being church and of revitalizing our church, we will become irrelevant and we will not survive. Families don't practice the faith today as they did years ago. But I am convinced that we can change this if we stand together, if we allow the gifts and talents of people like you to be put to good use, to be put to, to the surface of our mission. We heard many times from the prophet Isaiah reminding us, the Lord himself telling us, I will never forget you. And Jesus telling us in the gospel, I will be with you always. Do, you, do we believe that? Do we trust that? And we heard from the prophet Jeremiah, I know well the plans I have in mind for you. Plans for your Wealth, welfare, to give you a future of hope. When you look for me, you will find me. You are here tonight because you are committed to this renewal, to this rebuilding, to this renovation of our future. Because you care about the church. Because you care about your future. We heard in the passage of the gospel today, Jesus saying that he came to bring good news to the poor. To proclaim liberty to captives. And to set the oppressed free. He did not come to do anything for himself. He came to do something for others. And his whole life was just about that, doing something for others. And in that, he saved the world and taught us how to live as children of God. I am convinced that this is not a time to be sad to be uh, sitting on the sideline. It is a time to wake up. It's a time to be excited about what we can do as a church. <laughs> when you look around the history of your church, we see many instances where the church went through very difficult times. If you think we are going to a difficult time right now, 
I encourage you to take some history books and read it. Yesterday at the meeting, I was talking to some people and I said, when I look at those events of the past history of our church, it gives me hope because it tells me if the church survived then, we're going to survive now. This is nothing compared to some of the events of the past. Because God has not abandoned us. And he will not abandon us. As we probably heard many times, the famous phrase, the blood of martyrs is seed of the church, is seed of faith. The moments of suffering and darkness brings new life. And those moments of difficulty and challenge in the history of the church, what happened to those moments? New leaders surfaced. Think of some people like Thomas Aquinas, Dominic, Francis, Claire, Catherine of Siena, Ignatius of Loyola, Teresa of Avila, John Paul II, Pope Paul VI, Teresa of Calcutta, and many others who were born of a moment of darkness in the church. And so, when you feel that you are in the darkness, you may, you may feel that you are buried. But in reality, you're only being planted. <laughs> You've only been planted so that you're going to germinate and sprout and grow and blossom and bear fruit. Isn't that what happened to every seed that has to die in order for a new life to be born, a new life to sprout and grow? We are going through a moment of transformation, but we need to die a little bit, to die to our own self-interest maybe, our own selfishness, our own laziness maybe, to say now I'm going to die a little bit, but I'm going to sprout and come out as a new plant, and I'm going to bear new fruit, and this is going to be a new field. Well, we saw a little clip from Apollo 13 mission. Houston, we have a problem. But with all due respect, sir, this will be our finest hour. We all know the story. We all know the journey to Calvary. Jesus carrying the cross, he stumbles, he falls, he gets up again. And then this incredible phrase of consolation to Mary, his mother. Behold, mother, I make all things new. But he's making things new through his cross, through his suffering, through his dying to a new birth. But now Jesus is inviting you and I here tonight to make things new here in the diocese of a river. To allow this new birth of new life, of new beginning, of new hope through our faith, our own participation in the life of the church. We are here tonight not to plan to close the shop. We are here tonight because, once again, God is doing something new. God is calling us, all of us, to a new mission. My friends, 
God is doing something new right here, right now, in you and me. He's using you and me today, right here on this 7th of February, 2019. He's using you and me tonight to make this new thing to rebuild this church of ours that we love so much. Why did you respond to the invitation to come here tonight? I'm sure you didn't do that just for curiosity to see who was going to be here tonight. I'm sure you didn't come here because you had nothing better to do. But you came here because you say, I want to be a part of this new way of being church, of involving the laity, of evangelizing, of inviting people and engaging people and working together. And when, when we change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. That's our new vision. That's our new way of being church. Think about it. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. If you change your perception of the reality, it is going to be a different reality because you see with different light and the different eyes. I know that Christ has something amazing to do in each one of you here tonight. You heard the testimony of David Rose about a moment that God used to change his life. Maybe tonight he's using this event to touch your heart and change your life so that you too can go and touch the lives of others and change the hearts of others. And so, my friends, as we plan this, as we take on this new beginning for our diocese here tonight, I want to ask you a question. Fifty years from now, what do you think our world is going to be like? Probably none of us knows. 50 years from now, most likely, many of us won't be here. So we're not even going to find out. <laughs> but most of you here have children, grandchildren, maybe some even great-grandchildren. And they will be here. What kind of world do you want them to live in, to grow in, and to be a part of. And what are we going to do today and tomorrow so that they can benefit and reap the fruits of what we are doing here right now? I invite you to join me also in prayer because this effort won't happen unless we all connect with God. And our efforts are blessed by God each day. And right after this tonight, we are going to begin a campaign, a networking of prayer throughout the whole diocese. So that these commissions, your work of what, what you are doing is blessed by God affirmed and supported by all our brothers and sisters throughout the diocese. Because we, this idea of isolation and silence and each parish is my little kingdom and leave me alone and I'll leave you alone is over. So we're going to pray. But we also... Besides prayer, we also need to, to be persevering and resilient. We, you know, it's easy. Everybody come here tonight 
It's a beautiful event and we sing and we pray and we are together and then tomorrow we go back to our <laughs> homes and to our work and to our thing and we may say, you know what, it was nice that night, but maybe I'm just gonna go back to my old way and lose the connection that we established here tonight. So I, I urge you to hang in there. Don't throw in the towel. Persevere. You'll be tempted to give up. All of us will. You know, when we started this process of the strategic planning to renew our diocese a couple of years ago, many of the priests told me, are you sure we're gonna be able to carry on? We've tried this so many times before. I said, no, but this time we're not gonna give up. And we haven't and we won't. We're gonna get through this. And we're gonna revitalize our diocese. I pray for that every single day. And I know that my prayers are not useless. I know God hears them. So persevere. And then, yes, have hope. We need, we need to be guided by hope. We need to connect in, in hope. We need to know that things can be better, that we can work it to change and make it better. If we lose hope, how can we accomplish? How can we change? How can we survive? So, it turns out that we don't really have a problem we have an opportunity. And here in Fall River, we have a dream. And it is a dream that is being placed in our hearts right here tonight by God who loves us so much. And he's calling us to be open to this renewal, to this commitment to working together, to build our church in faith and hope. Because as we heard Jesus saying, behold, I make all things new. So my friends, will you join me to be a part of this solution and not of a problem? Will you join me and be a part of those who instead of cursing the darkness, we're going to light a candle. Will you join me and be a part of those that instead of putting out the fire, we're going to throw fuel on the fire and light the fire. Will you join me and be a part of those who see the glass half full and not half empty? Will you join me in being a part of those who transform the problems into opportunities and new dreams? Will you join me in being a part of all those who will change as the stumbling block into stepping stone? And who will join me in seeing that the night is only a prelude to a new day. Thank you. God bless all of you.